Salam alaikum, feminists. Peace be upon you. Now, I don't mean to break up this honeymoon thing you got going on with Islam. Yeah, but uh, someone's got to get between the slow dance and tell you, y'all just weren't meant for each other. I, I know, research, logic, critical thinking, not really your strong suits, but straight up, feminists, you're getting pranked by Islam. The young girl at the end of that video, not to mention the innumerable others around her who submitted to the Muslim call to prayer at their women's march, are not submitting because they're intimidated by Islam or afraid of violent retaliation or simply because they don't wish to offend the babyish sensibilities of many Muslims. They're submitting because they have been brainwashed. They've been told that a hussied up hijabed woman is the new face of their movement, the ultimate embodiment of diversity and distinct strength, and that their pro-Sharia organizer is about the same struggle against oppression as they are. The truth is, we women, we're gonna have to pick. Which one is it gonna be, feminism or Islam? Because frankly, in no world can the two cultures coexist. You cannot simultaneously be a Western feminist and profess all the fundamental tenets of Islam. The feminist rallies against the patriarchy. However, Islam is the patriarchy to the umpteenth degree. Islam teaches that women are worth less than men, that women are subservient to men, submissive to men. According to the Quran, women aren't allowed to so much as look at men in the eyes. Heck, Muhammad even brags about how his wives are trained to defecate on his command. The feminist, well, she's against misogyny, but in Islam, misogyny and sexism are actually mathematically established. A woman's testimony in court, for instance, is worth exactly half that of a man's. The feminist goes on slut walks in a demonstration of her sexual autonomy, but no such autonomy exists for women in Islam. The Quran says that it is men who determine how a woman is to dress. There are no slut marches in the Middle East. There's no march for women of any kind. That's because the Quran teaches that women are to be confined to their homes, that they are to abide quietly there, unless, unless of course, they have a man's permission to go outside. The last time that they had a women's march in the Middle East, was the last time that women in the Islamic Republic of Iran left their homes without a hijab. Because as it turns out, folks, the Islamic Republic's revolutionary government was being dead serious when they declared that henceforth, yea and forevermore, all Iranian women would not be allowed to step outside of their own homes if they did not wear a head covering, a hijab, that oppressive cloth that the Western feminist has come to adore. However, ironically and frankly, pathetically, the Western feminist says, my body, my choice. Well, aborting a fetus is haram in Islam, while a man has complete dominion over his wives, plural, bodies. Islam turns women's bodies into the ultimate commodity, even permitting men to take on slaves outside of marriage. The feminist stands quite rightly against domestic violence and violence against women. Well, according to the Muslim holy book, yeah, it's actually perfectly permissible for husbands to beat their wives. The feminist stands against so-called rape culture, while Islamic nations, well, they regularly partake in victim blaming. In several Muslim countries, it'd be common to throw the rape victim in jail while her rapist remains free. The Western feminist, for some reason, takes tremendous pride in her period. I'm nasty, like my blood stains on my bed sheets. We don't actually choose if and when to have our periods. Believe me, if we could, some of us would. Yeah, well, according to Muhammad, your menstrual cycle is a curse of sorts that makes you deficient. Today's feminist stands in solidarity with members of the LGBT community. Devastatingly, though, there are 10 Muslim countries in which homosexual acts are punishable by death, and many more in which such acts are actually expressly illegal. Today's feminist despises President Donald J. Trump, but exalts any female in a political position of power. 
Pity shame Islam says that no nation shall ever succeed should they make a woman their leader. The Western feminist has become obsessed with her genitalia, roundly condemning any grabbing therein. Well, so-called pussy is a big deal in Islam as well. In fact, Muhammad says that the most important thing a woman brings to a marriage is what's between her legs. According to Muhammad, the most important part of a marriage contract is the unrestricted access that a man has to his wife's vagina. And I'm sure there are a lot of women who wish that their pussies were just grabbed as opposed to mutilated. Like some 200 million girls and women alive right now, today, who have undergone female genital mutilation in the Muslim countries where the practice is concentrated. And the Muslim woman's condemnation, misfortune, and inferiority, well, it doesn't even end in this life, but carries on into eternity as well. Because according to Muhammad, women comprise the bulk of hell's occupants. Why in the hell is Western feminism so afraid to criticize Islam? Why are you so keen to pretend that Islam is just like any other religion? How much favor are you really doing Muslims by not challenging them to the sort of self-critique necessary for moral progress? How much of a favor are you doing us, ourselves, yourself, by desperately trying to accommodate that which has, frankly, no intention of accommodating you. Look, I get it. Feminism and Islam, while well, they share some fundamental tenets like a profound hatred for the West, hypersensitivity, and an affinity for curbing free speech. However, one consideration of this sharp spike in groping, harassment, assaults, and even rapes now common in Europe since its invasion by Muslim men might have you rethink just what exactly you're in the business of doing here. But, 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 but perhaps that's it. Islam frightens you feminists because it makes it just so clear how very privileged, revered, fortunate, and favored Western women really are. Well, here's a newsflash. It's Judeo-Christian civilization that got you here. It's Judeo-Christian civilization which produced law codes and material prosperity that has elevated we women unlike our sisters in the Muslim world. Here's an idea. How about you use your marches and your signs in a fight to help make them free? How about you proactively and unapologetically defend the values that have allowed you to flourish? How about you Pick real feminism in the interest of all women against real oppression over the counterfeit freedom being sold to you by the Islamic apologists who have, frankly, infiltrated your movement. Because if you don't, all I have to say to you is enjoy the real patriarchy, ladies. For the Rebel.media, I'm Faith Goldie. Like what you just saw, well, we have a lot of videos unmasking Islam and feminism for what those two streams of thought really are. Click below and subscribe to our YouTube channel.